We've spoken about the amazing capabilities that are introduced by the store P instruction, but have spoken cryptically about them. There are two large cases in which store P is useful. One is in memory, and the other is in an I.O. register, such as a COM port. And they're quite different uses. Right now, we'll take a look at what you can do in memory with one. And what you can do is to make a variable, a very simple three-word structure in memory. The advantage of doing it this way is that one need not mess around with addresses. One need not talk to A or B or change what's in those registers in order to fetch and store the values. It's a little bit tricky. If I want the value of Joe, I say fetch P and return. This fetch P reads that value, pushes it onto the data stack, and returns. This is exactly as though I had written that value as a literal. That's exactly how the compile code would look for a definition whose function was to just push a literal on the stack and return it. One word of code in front of this literal form provides the ability to store into that location in memory that has the value in it. Here's how it does it. Fetch P drop reads out of memory and increments P this address. This, this instruction word here, and drop dispenses with it. So the fetch p drop has the effect of skipping the next instruction word in sequence in memory. After which we say store p, which is going to happen right here where p is pointing, and then we do a return. So we have used two words of memory and for code and one word of memory for a value and achieved a variable. To do this practically any other way would take at least as much and probably more space. Every time you need to come up with the address of someone like Joe, you have to put a literal into your code. That's going to cost one word for the literal and one slot to fetch it, and maybe more if you have to push yourself across word boundaries. Um, if you need it twice, you've now used two slots plus two words just to be able to get the address of this thing, and you haven't even begun to deal with the fetching and storing of it. So generally speaking, this is the most space economical way there is to have something that behaves like a simple variable in RAM as opposed to on the stack. In our later classes on useful coding methods in these computers, we will be emphasizing keeping your variables on the stack because really that's the most appropriate way to do it whenever possible.